Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Mark Spencer, and with me today is the incredible compressor, amazing expert, Brian Gary. Well, thank you for that, Mark Spencer. How are you doing, Brian? I'm doing very well. Hey, what are we going to talk about today? Today, I have a, a kind of a quick tip that can really save your butt, I, especially when, when you have a time constraint involved and you've created um, a Blu-ray, especially, okay. and you've done like a compressor batch template or you've done share through Final Cut, and you have created the project, you've encoded the assets, you have done the actual burn process, and right. when it came up and said, do you want to burn another disc? Or are you finished? You thought you were finished, and you clicked OK. OK, so you burn the one disc, uh -huh. and then you only wanted one. Exactly. So you said, hey, I'm done. I'm done. Right? So, so what's the problem with that? Well, as a safety, what I thought would help me uh -huh. was I actually went and saved the batch, which is you know the set of instructions. So for right. example, here I have, just in case I wanted to burn me again, I actually double clicked. Oh wait, so so wait a minute. Yeah. You you actually in compressor like you created a batch and you ran it and yeah. when you were done and you quit compressor and it said, "Hey, do you want to save the batch?" I you did said it. yes. I did it. And I want I've never done that. I'm always like, "I don't want that. Forget it." But you actually saved that batch. Yeah, and I won something too. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so, but what happened here is this is kind of an interesting conundrum I find myself in. Because yes, all of the instructions are here, meaning I have the job action which you can see uh, dictates okay, here. Okay, so this is your Blu-ray encoding of your mm -hmm. video and audio right. assets, It's right? got my source video, uh -huh. it's got you know, my two elementary streams, and it has my job action, um, all, all the settings that I, I created for the job action. Okay. The problem is there's no way for me to jump past the re-encoding of the project just to get to the burn in this scenario right here. So what I'm facing, let's say if this was 30 seconds, okay, but let's say it's 90 minutes. And I've just spent six hours encoding this Blu-ray, and then I burned the disc, and the burn the disc tape took maybe like 30 minutes to actually make the media. In this scenario, after when it asked me, do you want to burn anymore, yeah. or are you finished? And I said, no, I'm finished. Right now, I'm facing an entire re-encode of everything. So even though you've done it already. I've so done you have it a 90-minute movie, mm -hmm. you encoded it, you burned a Blu-ray disc, you mm -hmm. said you were done, so you said yeah. I'm done. Exactly. And now you realize you need to make another one. Right. Even if I have the assets still there. Even if the assets, you can't, it's, compressor is going to recompress everything again, so you're looking at hours exactly. to get another DVD out. Yeah, I mean, I could say go into maybe Encore, Toast, or something like that, yeah. but if I want to replicate my my scenario here, which was to use compressor to create this final Blu-ray, maybe I had a background and things All like right. that. So obviously you've figured out a way around this. Oh yes, there's many pathways to the waterfall grasshopper. <laughs> so remember when you actually go through the process of of creating the disc. Mm -hmm. Part of the process is an application launches, and it's called create disc. And that's okay. the one that says, oh, please insert. If yeah. you're doing a DVD, it asks for a DVD. If you're doing a Blu-ray, it asks for whatever. Yeah. And it just package. launches all by itself. It does. It launches and asks for the disc, and then it actually takes you through all the right. encoding process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, the burning process of your encoded files. Well, try and find that, meaning it's not in the applications folder. It is, a, it is an application that is installed with the new version of Final Cut Studio. It was uh -huh. written specifically for this new interaction with compressor and these batch templates, but it's buried. So, so it's not in your applications folder? No, it's in, right here I'm looking at the root of your hard drive, okay. which is called More Better. And then I'm in your root library, application support, uh -huh. Q master, and there it is. Uh, Create which, disk. Which Spotlight can't even find, right? It won't look in there. Exactly. Curse you, yeah. Spotlight. Yes. Kirk. Anyway, so if I, if I double click on this, something interesting is going to happen. It's going to launch again, and it'll, it'll display the same menus that it did when it was actually making the disk itself. But I have this file, open recent, open recent. and there it is. Now, why does it say untitled? Well, basically, I, this is a, a very kind of temporary location that CreateDisk stores these files 
kind of while it's moving. So it's very volatile. It probably won't last through one or two, you know, restarts your machine. It's, a, uh, it's in a so cache it's, so it's somewhere. So it's a cache file that could be yeah. purged through exactly. some kind of maintenance or shutdown or log out or something. Exactly. Okay. So what this really is, is if I go ahead and click on this, I'll do it in a second, is it's one of those, I clicked OK, and then the phone rings and says, oh, you know, by the way, can you make us three more disks? Yeah. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, I can't. I can't face another six hours. I open this right back up. My media is still there. I click Untitled, and it starts burning the disk again. Okay. So if I'm trying to find that job I did, you know, five days ago, mm -hmm. this you're kind of you're back to square one where you are re-encoding everything. Right. But There's if another, you do it right away, you can probably save your save your butt. I, with a no, gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. So what I did, though, is because I was done making the disk, mm -hmm. I started cleaning up my drive, and I trashed my two assets that my job here, uh, you can see in the background, created. So when I go to run this again, I'm going to get an error message that says, you know, basically, either uh, video audio could not be found. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I don't have a dialog box that allows me to say, no, it's here. You're done. It doesn't give you the option. Because yes. you logically you think like, hey, I can't find the media. Mm -hmm. Locate it for me. Exactly. But it won't let you do that. Yeah. It's just That's just it. Yeah. In this, over. in this case, I had put it in the trash, but I hadn't emptied it. If I put it back, you, you see back. right here on the desktop, yeah. then it would run and be Then fine. it would run. Okay. But again, this is, a, a, you know, though this is a nice little workaround and it can save you, it has a very, very short window. Short window of opportunity. Practical window, I should yeah. say. But... Yeah. Very, very helpful for that time that you burn and quit and realize you need to burn another one. Yes. That gets you around that whole re-encoding thing. Mm -hmm. Cause, Brilliant. Yeah, because especially in those situations where you think you just need one and mm -hmm. all of a sudden the scenario changes and now you need more. Fantastic. Sure. So how can we learn more? Because every time I see compressor, I, I get amazed that there's more and more and more to learn about this application. Well, in the new Compressor 3.5 uh, video series that Apple certified. That's design. right. The first... Apple certified video training. That's true. For one of the Final Cut Studio applications. The I go into a, a great detail about not only how to use the application and get through it, but kind of I take some of these tangents. And this this is one of those tangents that's in the great. video training as well. Even talk a little bit about command line usage of, of Compressor mm -hmm. for those who really want to get their geek on. And uh, but it's um, it's also for those who want to become Apple certified, certified. in Compressor okay. because you can watch the video series and then you can take the test. Fantastic. Yeah. So, and we can find out more about Compressor 3.5 training at rippletraining.com. Rippletraining.com. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.